Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to a brand new game which just came out yesterday called We The Revolution. It's developed by a developer named Polyslash and it's published by Clay, ba Clay Bater, I think is the name of the publisher. And it's a game that puts you in the shoes of a judge during the French Revolution. It has a very Papers, Please-like vibe and is really a, a pretty deep, as far as I can tell so far, strategy game that's about climbing the ladder of the French Revolution while maintaining your relationship with the common folk, with the revolutionaries, with your family, uh, as you try and stepping, you know, step over and past various rivals that may get in your way, all while trying various criminals or innocents and deciding on whether to execute or quit them uh, as you navigate your way through French revolutionary politics. It's a really interesting game uh, that has a very, again, papers please type vibe. We played through the first day of the game, the tutorial, and the first day of action yesterday, and today we'll be returning to the game here in day two. This is part of a live stream from the other day on my Twitch channel, uh, and this is part two of our look at We the Revolution. So sit back, relax, and enjoy, and let me know your thoughts below. Uh, okay. Today the people of Paris commemorate Jacques Gulmi Simon. I really shouldn't even try and pronounce any of these names, guys. I can't pronounce French words for fuck's sake. Uh, he was lynched by a furious mob for performing his duties to France. This march will symbolize the unity of our society and the hope that most violent stage of the revolution has passed us. Let us make sure that no other loyal servant of France becomes a victim of such hatred ever again. King Louis the Sixteenth. Uh, well, that's rem a reminder. King Louis is still alive. A uh, good loyal officer, those bastards lynched him for observing the law. Will you join me at the march? So I'm assuming if we join at the march, that will improve our relations with the common folk, but not the revolutionaries. I'd be interested to see what happens at the march, though. But the problem is that kind of puts me on the side of the king, right? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what happens. I wonder why the king has taken the trouble to show up. Louis the Sixteen marching arm in arm with the people of Paris. That is unexpected. King Louis! Continue, please. I'm merely an observer. Do not... I don't know why I'm speaking with that kind of an accent. Heard a th two, thing or two about a young and ambitious judge of the tribunal. I was curious whether he is guarded by justice or by entertainment, as some would say. Okay, King Louis... King Louis just observing the trial over here like a commoner. Good relationship with your son. Younger son adores you like he used to back in the good old days. Poor papa. Poor. Okay. <laughs> the Nortree family, that's cute. Um, doesn't tell me what the effects are other than I have a good relationship with him. Uh, the revolutionaries have a low opinion of me. This went down a little bit more. I'm assuming it's because I went to the march, maybe. Or maybe that hasn't happened yet. Robbing the bourgeoisie is no crime. According to the case file, you're a citizen Oliver Mugler, is that correct? Indeed it is, Monsieur le Judge. May I have a request? I would like to sit down. I'm an old man, you see. Basic respect for the ju judiciary requires that you remain standing. Do the names Saline, Rude, and Rogue mean anything to you? Why are you so determined to harass an old man? They sounded like the names of my debtors. Debtors, they're victims of activities you conducted. You mean locksmithing? Uh, okay, well, let's take a look at the case file. So, the accused is accused of theft and burglar burglary. The defendant, Oliver Mugler, a 65-year-old master locksmith who was famed among the Parisian burglars as an expert on unopenable locks. Last month, he was commissioned by owners of a Parisian glassworks, uh, Jean Rude, Louis Roche, and Ferdinand Salon, to construct locks for ornate chests for valuables, presumably as gifts for their wives. The craftsman praised his latest creation as thief-proof. Shortly following their completion, the industrialist houses were hit by a series of burglaries committed by a recent newcomer to Paris, Hector Vian, the thief from Orléans, uh, was caught in the act and shot by Ferdinand Salon. An expensive Turgot map of Paris, with the houses of the recently robbed industrialists marked on it, was found on the deceased. Surprisingly, Salon had given Mugler an identical map as advanced payment. This deposit was in addition to the agreed remuneration from all of the employers. So basically, the accused made a bunch of locks for rich people. The rich people were robbed, and then the robber was found, after being killed, uh, with a map that was given to him by the robbed. Uh, okay, 
So question number two, further interesting information came from the owner of Ginger Margaret Inn. She recalled that on the night preceding the burglary, the locksmith met there with a man she didn't recognize. Based on her description, we were able to identify him as the aforementioned Hector Vian. The men allegedly engaged in an evening of drinking sponsored by Mugler. Evidence, a map of Paris found on Hector Vian. Well, that doesn't look good for the accused. Uh, let's see. Master Locksmith, we have eight questions to reveal. We can make up to three mistakes uh, on some of these, it looks like. So he's a Master Locksmith. Mock construction. I don't know. There's a lot of questions to try and get right with only three mistakes. Map of Paris. Oh, fuck. Okay, so that the map of Paris is a question revealed. Series of burglaries. Uh, famous thief. Good God, this is going to be a tough one. Marks on the map. All right, so that was evidence. Um, all right, so Master Locksmith is tied to the personality. It could also be tied to extenuating circumstances. Okay. Um, so we're about halfway through these. We've gotten a couple of good de deductions, I believe. Lock construction. Um, would that be course of events, I guess? Yes, it is. Okay. So we have three more questions to reveal. Series of burglaries is probably the accusation, or is it course of events? Famous thief could be one of the three as well. Drunken evening could also be one of the three. Not really the accusation or the evidence. All right, awesome. It was the course. It was course, or sorry, evidence. Evidence? Course of events. No! Oh, I can make up to three mistakes. Wow, that was close. All right, so I guess I had one more than I thought. So you can see here there's a lot of questions that we can ask. Um, first, we were con so... You're commissioned by the victims to make chest locks who installed them. And it was me. Prepare and install the locks. The employer was only to come and see what the paperwork was completed and pay, of course. No, on site, the client's property. None of those idlers bothered to deliver the tr to trunks to my workshop, so I had to strain my old legs. Does that mean you knew the victim's addresses? How else would I know how to get there? Well, I was snotty. Did you know Hector Vian before? This is the first time I've heard his name. Interesting, as you're seeing draining several bottles of wine together at the Ginger Mario Inn. Is that a crime? No, but the question is why are you denying it now? Nobody I had a drink with introduced themselves as Hector. I didn't plan any heist with a Hector, Victor, or Hugo. I'm a locksmith and I earn good money from it. Burglaries are for vagrants without a job. Okay. Now, let's actually go back here real quick. The common folk actually want the acquittal. The revolutionaries want him sent to prison. That's interesting. We've got a good relationship with the common folk, so we could play that off by sending him to prison if that's what the uh, revolutionaries want. Uh, were you the one who marked the addresses on the victims of the map? I didn't mark anything. The houses of your ch clients are marked on the map. I don't know who marked them. Maybe you should ask the person you found the map on. Maybe the court made the marks and has no memory of doing so. Yes, the court made the marks on the map because I have just, that's what I do. At, my, at night when I hung out with my wife, I marked the map. Um, a lot of coincidences, that's for sure. I know nothing of coincidences. I only make maps. Or oh, maps. Wow, that would be an accusation. Um, how much do you charge for your service? 3,000 francs. Wow, that's a tidy sum. If you were a master locksmith, you'd charge that much. That's quite a substantial fee. Indeed, that's how much it costs to have high quality locks made by a master. Nearly 50 years of experience, and those bastards never paid me a single franc. Uh, not a franc. I'd beat that money right out of them, but I'm too old for that. That kind of makes it sound like you had a motive. Just saying. Um, okay. I gave nothing to Achilles, Hector, or any of the other Greeks. Call in the witness, citizen Jean Roud. Jean Roud in the fresh. You will not speak unless called upon. <laughs> Naturally, of course. Want what went missing during the burglary. 
My house was the first one to be robbed, and in my case, it was mostly valuables at the Rue house. He will not say it himself, but I do not want to go to prison. It was the letters, or wait, he will not say himself, and I do not want to go to prison. It was the letters he exchanged over the years with King Louis. What? Salon did not lose a thing. He shot that vermin in the act. That is what he said. What happened to the items that he stole? They still remain unknown. According to Salon Hector, he had nothing to do with them. Ferdinand suspects he had hidden the other valuables somewhere. He hid the other item before robbing the last house? Strange. You look upset. What are you afraid of? Advanced payment in the form of a map. It's a disappearance, the murder of a burglar, and a lock, lack of payment. Advanced payment in the form of a map. It's disappearance, the murder of a burglar, and a lack of payment for services. What are you afraid of? Monsieur le judge, the crowd behind me. And you know, you know what? I do not want to go to prison. And Salon said that if I were to talk nonsense in court, I would be sentenced to a few years. Is that true? Uh-oh, you were told on how to testify? He might have offered some suggestions, not on how to get into trouble by speaking gibberish. I'm a rather nervous person. Sometimes I struggle to make sense. This is suspicious. A fool more than a witness. That's the, that's the bourgeoisie. Uh, did you tell Hector Vian how to open the locks? If he sold the secret of my locks, then my business would be over. Word spreads fast among thieves. That seems reasonable enough. Okay, you're a good locksmith. Do you recognize this map? No, I don't recall seeing it before. He claims what the wicked wretch, the second-rate merchant, gave up a scrap of map paper, blah, blah, blah. Okay. No! Now the jury wants to acquit him. I don't want to acquit him. Uh, do I have to make it? The jury votes in favor of acquitting the defendant, in defendant. They find him innocent. So if we do acquit... Oh, boy. So the... <laughs> The common folk will really like me, but the revolutionaries will be pretty upset with me. If we send them to prison, it'll be about even between the two. But I, I mean, honestly, the evidence says acquit. So, you know, if the glove does not fit, you must acquit. The verdict is, uh, okay. Bravo, Mugler. Always with the bourgeoisie. To be honest, this does not bear the marks of social justice. They would not pay him, so he had them robbed. There's no, there's balance here. I guess. Apparently there was no influence on the jury, so at least that's good. But the, the revolutionaries sure hate me. Common folk love me, though. Do we have the hierarchy here? So apparently David, an artist and politician, he's painting often refers to the revolution or it comes to his political career. He's an efficient deputy in the convention. Those two areas of his life were blending together and feeding back on themselves. For example, when he led the closure of the Académie Francie, uh, the same institution that he rejected him for many years, his longtime friend of me. So he's our friend, but he's also the next in line of our political ambition. And then there's Burrell, the agent commander of the National Guard. He's seen enough not to put trust in ordinary people, even if they're starting a revolution. Okay. So we acquitted. I think that leads us to the next step, right? Are we going to do anything with the king? Oh, the king is still here. Look, an authentic Mac by Turo. It would seem to be a pity if it robbed in a safe deposit box. These are court deposits. There you go. I knew someone who came to remove these marks without damaging the map. Okay. King Louis the Sixteenth. There were people who truly loved him. He reminded the French they had noble ancestors. Do not be manipulated by people who are not bearing the burden of responsibility. This saddened me. Someone had advised him to say that. Someone who was well aware of the cold, inevitable wind of change. I did not pity the king, but those who will come after him, as they will not have great ancestors. 
It seems a stretch to call the king a great ancestor, but okay. One of us, Frenchmen, marched in the streets of Paris, side by side, one line after another, to commemorate Jacques Gilmour Simon, mayor of Emptes. I Again, words, pronunciations, I'm terrible. He was murdered by a furious mob, punished for a law he did not enact, but was obliged to observe. Freedom of speech killed him. If we understand this as the right to cast stones to show one's discontent, the right to murder people because you deem them responsible for your miserable life, surely the people of Paris would prefer if we said that nothing happened. So the revolutionaries' endorsement goes up one because we march with them, and the common folks' endorsement goes down three. So we at least get a little bit back from the revolutionaries for participating in the march. Your son is rather good with the viola. He's both talented and enthusiastic. I'd prefer that he was as enthusiastic about the law books I gave him. Maybe he's destined to become an artist, not a lawyer. Mother likes to hear me playing, and there's nothing more bo boring than law. <laughs> You're... Okay. See, he'd rather let his career rely on the humors of people. There are many ways to rescue France, believe me. Our country desperately needs something to ennoble it. That power is in the hands of simple, illiterate people. Let him rescue their souls with music. That's better than boring laws and clauses. See what you're doing? You're spoiling my child. I do not have any of my own children to spoil, so I'm focusing on yours. Speaking of which... Oh, no, 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 no! Okay, so after various important events, you may find yourself with an action forced upon you. On this day, you become the victim of your own decisions. I can't change this action, so I have to do the story event with Simonu. Okay. You attend the parade in memory of the lunched official. Proves my reputation with my father. Decreases my older son's reputation. Decreases my wife's opinion of me. And my younger son is unimpacted. My wife is really starting to hate my guts. This might be a problem. That uh -oh. is our new symbol of freedom. You can still smell the fresh wood. Do you feel free looking at it? <laughs> Individuals like us do not need symbols, but France does. Good God. You, hear the news you of want the an day? execution item People as your are symbol of France? Like headless chickens and yelling about Louis and his entourage escaping Paris. So, we will not be enjoying the aroma of fresh wood for long. Monuments like that are not installed solely for the purpose of punishing thieves or lesser aristocrats. Do you think it wants to taste royal blood? Oh, God. Louis' flight was a stupid move, yet it seems it was planned. One of us will sacrifice him. That is, if they catch him. Is that why Louis visited us at the court? To manipulate us? Maybe deep in his heart he felt what the builders of the guillotine did. That someone has to be exposed as a traitor. Even if there is none. Okay. Well, the guillotine, the symbol of France. Vive le... Oh, well, no, never mind. Uh, Anthony Tinville. Welcome, Citizen Fidel. My name is Anton Anthony uh, Quintin Fouquier de Tinville. I am the public prosecutor that has been assigned to assist at every tribunal starting today. I should warn you that I am uncompromising, although I hope that we quickly find common ground. In happier news, the construction of the guillotine has been finished. We may begin using it today, so now we can start executing people. Yes, we have seen it. The king is gone. Treason. Anyone with information about his whereabouts should immediately disclose it to the authorities. Robespierre. Okay. So we've got a trial in front of us here. Everybody wants, the uh, revolutionaries and the common folk want to acquit. Can I just acquit right now? Like, why, why even hear the trial? Let's just acquit him. Um, they're bringing in Jean. Jean? We're with you, Jean. Is this Jean Marciniak, my co-host on the Single Malt Strategy podcast? Please introduce yourself. Jean Ibert, the conqueror of the Bastille and vanquisher of the tyrant de Lonnie, the hero of all Parisians. Jean Ibert, you are accused of raping Miss Ilondi de uh, Pontobilla, daughter of the Baron Tommy de... Oh, God, I do you plead guilty. I do not plead anything. The bourgeoisie and her counter-revolutionary father are filthy liars. We need to bear in mind the possibility of criminal collusion in these charges. That's right, those rich swine love their machinations. The evidence speaks against you. Girlish duplicity. They really had to make this a rape trial. 
God damn it. Everybody wants to acquit the rapist. Well, we don't know if he's guilty yet. Let's find out. Jean Hibert, the, fam- uh, the famous street urchin who killed the governor of the Bastille, Delaunay, and carried his head on a pike, has recently been detained. After the triumph of the revolution, he reached the nadir of his life. Though many people still consider him a hero, they do not care that the Parisian archives are filled with complaints about thieves, robbers, and assaults on women. Uh, the current case is much graver, as Hibert is accused of raping 16-year-old Ilondi de Pontabella, The charges were brought up by the victim's father, Baron Thomas de Pontabella. It is widely known that de Ponte... Stop making me say this! ...was a relative and friend of the governor, de Lonnie. The crime allegedly took place in the tenement building belonging to the victim's family. Jean was detained by people working outside while trying to escape the building. Ilonde gave a written statement saying that the incident took place on a holiday, and Jean used the absence of the baron and most of the servants to break into the tre- tenement. Once he was inside, he entered her room and raped her. Yikes. The incident was witnessed by Anne Michel, Ilonde's governess. It was she who alarmed the workers about disturbing noises coming from her carriage room. A number of witnesses felt obliged to inform the, us that Anne Michel is known for her psychotic jealousy and her numerous romances with the people of France. Okay, so she's apparently someone who sleeps around, and therefore the people accuse her of being, you know, not. The result of the medical examination, the examination revealed the following. The following defloration. Good God! Defloration, minor attrition of the genital area, bruising and hemorrhaging of the arms, spine, and face. So she had sex and maybe was raped. Okay. That's going to be rough. (sighs) Darn justice, do what's politically expedient. Thomas Paine almost fed his head on the chopping block in France. Yeah, I do find that pretty interesting, Thermachius. Ugh, okay. We need to... Oh, so wait. Do I have to click on these to find out the questions? Oh, no. Okay, so famous defendant... What does that mean? We've got eight questions, one potential trap. I'm not totally under sure I understand what the significance of the traps is yet, but... Um, to me, famous defendant seems like it's an extenuating circumstance. And I'm right. It could also be offender's personality. Yes, and I'm also right. Wow, those are two good guesses to start. Multiple complaints... Um, does that also fit into offender's personality? Yes, it does. Rape. I guess the evidence would be there, right? Or is that testimony? Or accusation? Accusation. Yes. Rape could also, however, be part of... Is it method? Man. But it also could be testimony, right? Doesn't really explain motive, though. Um... Her personality... Okay, so this is the rape, the raped victim. I don't know why there'd be motive there. It's more of an accusation. The governor of the Bastille's relatives. That would be motive, wouldn't it? Okay. So all of the questions were uncovered, and we avoided the trap, which was the house, which essentially was an irrelevant piece of evidence. So now we have a whole bunch of questions, um, and we can see which ones are going to influence the jury in which way. So did you know Miss Olandi de Pantabella before the incident? She flirted with me every every time she visited the cafe. Oh, come on. Now you're going to say that she asked? Seriously, this is just... uh, It wasn't rape. She was... She was... Show me one girl that wouldn't say no to a hero. Oh, my God. What? Uh. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I mean, I want to kill him, but I've already pissed. Uh. <laughs> I don't even know how to proceed, guys. I need a drink. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, you can tell why the judge is, um, <laughs> might just be a little bit of a drinker. <sighs> Good God. Show me one girl that would say no to a hero. I'm sure there are many, douchebag. You say you met her at Cafe Procopy. I highly doubt that such a young lady would go to a place like that all by herself. Who said she was alone? Annie brought her, and everyone knows she likes to have fun. 
Are you talking about Annie Michelle, Miss Alondi's governess? That's right. Look at that smug little look on his face and those little beady little eyes. He's just so content in his own righteousness that he's going to get away with this. What a fuckhead. So that's not the first time you entered the house of the victim's family. What victim? Anyways, yes, I was there a few times and I know it well. Let me just say that Annie Michelle and I have explored every... Oh, good God, spares the details. The old whore took a... Took the young whore for a walk. Oh, my God. Ugh. Oh, God. Um. Ooh, this is a good question. I mean, not really from a justice perspective. How many of your previous victims have you raped? None. I've done many things, but luckily I'm still young and handsome enough to not need violence to be with a woman. Uh, then what were all those other women accusing you of? I have no idea. They didn't complain when we were together. What? Were you ever sentenced for assaulting women? They never proved me guilty. And they'll let him go through this this time. Then why were they making any of those accusations? They probably just wanted money. Everybody wants to murder him now. Oh my god. Um... Before we ask more of these questions, I want to look at the verdict form. If I was to kill him, I would be pissing everybody off. <laughs> the jury votes in favor of the immediate decapitation of the, the defendant. So the jury uh, is at least on the side of justice, even if the people and the revolutionaries are not. Oh, my goodness. Um... Did you choose Ilande de Pinta for your victim because she's related to Delaunay? I didn't know they were related. Then why her? She was young, soft-skinned, and very eager, if you really want to know. Are you suggesting that it was Miss de Pontanta who initiated the intercourse? Who did what? Ah, she asked for me to caress her. Oh, she desperately wanted that. She dreamed about me for a long... This guy's a fuckhead! The victim is but a frail girl. Did you really have to beat her that badly? Did you have to beat her that badly? Oh my god. Why would I beat her? I didn't even have to undress her. She removed her clothes by herself. She jumped out of her dress, unfastened my belt, and... Monsieur Le Judge, I can tell you everything in great detail if you want me to. Did she take her clothes off because you threatened her? She would have threatened me if I had refused her. Go on, we're listening. Uh, okay, so everybody is fully, all the jury anyway, is fully in favor of execution. Let's ask the uh, other witness to come in here. Yeah, Jack, something about this guy definitely makes me want to stab him. What's your name? Anne Michelle, Miss Ulondi de Pontar's governess. What did you know about the case? Wait, whoops. What do you know about the case? Hubert is guilty and should be killed. He used our relationship to get closer to the Baron's daughter and hurt her. What do you mean? He knew exactly when the servants had a day off and when the Baron left for the legislative assembly. Did he learn those facts from you? Not directly. He paid me several visits at Baron de Pontal's house. Did it not occur to you that he may be able to use this information against the family? I see. Did the Baron know about your meetings? No, the Baron had more important things to worry about than the personal lives of his servants. Why did ne you neglect your duties and stop looking after the victim? That day, the Baron ordered me to take care of the house. Miss Solondi didn't have any classes and was spending time in her room. And you did not hear the accusing to the building? No, I was busy in the kitchen. I wasn't alerted until I heard the sound of a struggle and her screams coming from the room. I find it baffling that you did not hear anything before then. I can't explain that, but I was making a lot of noise while cooking. Is watching the house not one of your responsibilities? Well, yes, but I can't be in two places at once. Interesting. So the testimony actually lowered people's uh, desire to execute him. So we're kind of in a quandary at this moment. If we start asking these other questions, then the desire for execution will drop because it'll lead the jury to more... Uh, of a opinion to um, acquit. Do you find particular pleasure in abuse of the women, or of women? Why would I abuse women when there are nicer things to do with them? Well, unless they like it. Are you suggesting the victim wanted to get raped and beaten? I didn't force her to do anything, and I definitely didn't beat her. The medical examiner proves clearly that she was injured. Who battered her? He was furious when he found out who was in bed with his sweet daughter. Are you suggesting that he assaulted his daughter because you consorted with you? It wouldn't surprise me. Aristocrats do worse things than beating their own children. How did you break into the tenement? She 
Charcoal, you still think he's innocent? I mean, he's definitely a sleaze bag, that's for sure. Um, no, but that explains a lot. The whole case was conjured up by Ponabella. He wants to get rid of me because I freed France from a tyrant. Delaunay's family should have been executed a long time ago. So you would not call rape an instrument of war against the monarchists? The monarchists should be decapitated, and their daughters should be thanking the heroes of the revolution. Oh, boy. Silence are talking about rape. Okay, so we are kind of at a crossover point. The jury's opinion is still death penalty, but I think if we ask this last question, it'll probably fall into a prison sentence. Uh, we're not going to get to acquittal, at least for, as far as the jury's concerned. Uh, the populace, on the whole, wants acquittal. Both the common folk and the revolutionaries admire this guy. It would be a cheap way for us to just acquit him to make people happy. Um, I don't know what the prosecutor thinks. Why don't you guys let me know what you think in the chat. I need to grab a refill on my beverage. I will be right back in maybe like a minute or two and let me know what you think we should do. I mean, from a gameplay perspective, obviously it's an easy way to score points with both the revolutionaries and the common folks, but it would make me feel like a sleaze not to chop this fucker's head off because he just gives that vibe that he probably did it. And even if he didn't, just look at that smug look, guys. Like, do we want to test the guillotine out? Do we want to see what happens? Maybe not if the people aren't in favor of it. There's this whole speech thing in front of giving the guillotine, which might not go over well if people aren't happy with the result. But All right, so uh, Jack says to kill him to test the mechanics. Charcoal says the evidence hasn't actually proved anything yet. Uh, Brethon is questioning my playing of the game and why I asked the questions I did, which resulted in the jury uh, desiring to kill him rather than just going for the acquittal questions. Obviously, that's a method you can take from a strategy perspective, but uh, I just... You know, I, I was kind of curious. I asked that first question, and I, I was horrified. And uh, the following questions kind of, I just wanted to learn more. Um, let's see. We all know people will be in jail if being a prick was a crime. That's definitely true, Brethen. Um, are we pulling an OJ and punishing him for his past crimes? Well, that's a, that's a deeper question that I'm going to answer on the stream. I think we will follow up with the last question asking how he broke in. If we are really, truly trying to prevent, uh, present justice, um, you knew about the back door, told me. She also informed me that her beloved father and most of the servants wouldn't be at home. She told you to visit her for this specific purpose. She was giving very clear signs. All aristocrats are whores. Wow, okay. Are you saying that you came to Baron de Potambella's house with an invitation from the victim? That young bitch promised me a nice afternoon. She explained everything in detail. Let John go. Quiet, the people. Quiet, people. The judge is beginning to understand. Remain calm, and he will soon let me go. <sighs> the way he talks just screams to me. Self-righteous, smug asshole who should be at least imprisoned. But for the purpose of this game, if I imprison them, people are slightly less mad than if I kill them. If I kill them, the common folks get really pissed. The revolutionaries don't really care either way. If I quit, people in general will like me a lot more. The common folk will absolutely love me. And uh, the revolutionaries will like me a little bit more. Um, I'm going to go with acquittal, guys. I know the, ju the jury wants him in prison. But uh, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, acquit him just for the sake of the game. You know, I don't want to die this early in the game. Yeah, with uh, allies like this, who needs enemies? Um, okay, so so now we have this report thing. Was his act counter-revolutionary in nature? No. Uh, what made the defendant famous in the eyes of the people storming the Bastille? How did the defendant explain the signs of an assault on the victim's body? He's saying her father beat her. And did the defendant attempt to explain the background of the rape? He said it was the victim who initiated the intimacy and first removed her clothes. He claims to have never touched the victim. He does not remember. Okay, so it was the intimacy. So uh, we can go ahead and sign here somewhere, I think. And um, we'll see what happens here. The judgment for Jean Aubert is not guilty. Take the defendant away. I must admit that his guilt was not clearly confirmed. Okay, so the prosecutor agrees with me. The people agree with me. The judge is one of us. And does it matter when, what we have to say? You'd better take us into account in the future. The jury's not pleased. 
So the influence of the jury doesn't change, but presumably it makes me less popular with them. My influence in the revolution goes up too. My reputation goes up too. I got a four out of four of the explanation of the report. And uh, yeah. So I think that was a warning from the jury. Enemy at the courthouse. The jury noticed you making the wrong choices and foregoing justice. The rumors spread fast. Common folk endorsement negative two. Revolutionary endorsement negative two. Uh, influence negative one and reputation negative five. God damn it. So I got all of the positive effects I had just went away because the jury doesn't like me. Great. All right. Well, moving on. What's next? All right, guys, that's going to do it for part number two of our look at We the Revolution, a new game which just came out on Steam the other day that puts you in the shoes of a French judge during the French Revolution. That trial was a bit cringy. Uh, you could tell at times I was very uncomfortable, kind of laughing, un uncomfortable laughing, as uh, you're uh, forced essentially to uh, rule on a rape case that, uh, frankly, I would assume the guy was probably guilty based off at least the way he responded. You know, obviously, um, the game was very strongly encouraging us to acquit him, which is what we did. Uh, because if we didn't, we would have made uh, the revolutionaries very upset and we would have been at risk of being killed ourselves. So in some sense, this is one of those first times the game uh, requires you that you make a bit of a morally dubious decision. Uh, and there presumably will be more, and I think that may be one of those strengths of this game of you trying to navigate the French Revolution. Is justice always the best course of action, or sometime do you have to save your own skin? But um, that's going to do it for this episode. Let me know if this is something you guys enjoyed, if you'd like to see more of this, and uh, what your thoughts are. You know, did I get it right in the trial? Should I have done things differently? Uh, that's going to do it here, though. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. And until next time, uh, we'll continue the series, maybe not tomorrow, but probably the day after. Uh, and until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.